Going is such like going is God. Yeah, okay, yeah. So he turned your dreams into reality. Um, what were some of your first goals that you set when you made the NFL? It's funny. I just had this conversation with somebody. I had no goals. Uh, I had no goals when I first came. My only goal was to make the team. Yes. That was my only goal to make somebody's team. Yeah. It's crazy. Um, I got in. Came, I actually signed with Houston. So I signed with Houston coming out as an undrafted free agent. And I tell people this all the time. I said, man, I wanted to make that team, but I didn't want to make that team. <laughs> Why? I wanted to make that team because um, I think anybody will tell you that most of the time your first training camp is always your hardest training camp. Okay. It's always your hardest training camp. So you don't know what to kind of experience in that situation. So you don't know what to expect first and foremost, but right. now you grew up playing football. You roll out the bed. Um, your mama take you to practice. You go back home. You ain't got no worries still. True. You ain't got no worries still. Now, this is a job. Mm. Like you doing this to make a living now right like you done with college like you leave from the nfl if you don't make it you going back home with mama nah facts you know <laughs> you're going facts. back home with mama so that ain't really no good look you know what i'm saying yeah that yeah, ain't no facts. good look so in my head i'm like like this this gotta work yeah like i was faithful the whole time i was like right. this gotta work i wouldn't be here if it didn't so nonetheless, um, I just kept running, going through training camp, and I ain't gonna lie to you, I was miserable in training camp. Mm. My first one, because you got all of that pressure. Right. You got True. all that pressure. I'm an undrafted guy. Uh, I'm going out, I'm making plays. Mm -hmm. But one thing you recognize as an undrafted guy, you ain't gonna get a lot of opportunities. You get the guys who come in first round, second round, third round. Mm -hmm. Oh man, they gonna give them so much rope. Right. But you, mm -hmm. you ain't got no leverage. You ain't got no. You ain't got no leverage. So whatever, whatever opportunity they give you, like you gotta make the best of it right away. Right. You know what I'm saying? It can't be no slip ups. Yeah. Any of that. So nonetheless, even when I was making taking advantage of my opportunities, like I wasn't getting the feedback that I wanted. Mm. I wasn't getting the feedback that I wanted, so I was getting it from my teammates, but not. But I wasn't getting it from the coaches, mm -hmm. and that's who it really meant. And that's who, it, and that's and that's the people who's speaking for you, exactly. In this business, right? That's the people who's speaking for you. They right. going up, they having meetings about you, like, okay, what you think about this guy? Mm -hmm. Ah, you know, he, you know, he don't know the playbook. He don't know this, you know. Ah, he's a good player, but ah, he can't play special team. Like they talk about all of this stuff mm -hmm. right here. So it goes down to. It could be a person make the team because you may have one guy who's better at the corner position, but you got another guy he's not that good at corner position. He's solid, but he's a very good special team player too. Mm -hmm. So now he have a little bit more value mm -hmm. than the other guy, even though the other guy's a better player. Right. So now they're looking for value. Okay. More than right. you know at a specific. So that's the way they they make some of these decisions mm -hmm. in the, in the game. So. Once you know that, now what do you have to do? You got to make sure your game is expanding. Yeah, you got to make mm -hmm. sure your game is expanding. So, from my position, I felt like I didn't have a, a, a real good chance because you know I returned kicks and stuff in college, punts, and the whole nine, and I got there and they wouldn't let me do it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Uh, they wouldn't let me do it. So yeah. I'm like, come on, man, that's that's, that's where I'm at. That's, that's, that's way I, I can get in. Yes. So they didn't let me do it, but I still was doing my thing at corner. Still doing my thing at corner. Um, I was doing I was doing good on special teams, um, but you get to a point to where it becomes a numbers game, mm -hmm. and it's hard not to count the numbers. Right. I'm like man, right. they already got this guy, this guy. He's gonna make the team. You start to count those numbers, and you're like, dang, where I'm at? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, where I'm at? Right. So, Flipping the page. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, man, they ain't gonna keep but five guys in my position. Mm -hmm. Typically, that's what they 
they kept in the lead. When I came in, they would keep five corners. Gotcha. So, and you go to count them numbers, you go to count them bodies. You're like, man, yeah. I see myself at best number seven. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so you look at it that way, not because you ain't good enough, but right. because you looking at the way they looking at mm -hmm. it. You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Fact. So, um, so nonetheless, I just did what I could control, man. I just went through it. Um, uh, finished training camp. Um, made a lot of plays still. Um, mm -hmm. I was always at the top of the charts when it came into the meetings. It was like, okay, who made plays on the ball? Who did? I was always at the top of the charts. And yeah. I always was getting compliments from my teammates. It was like, T, man, you showing up on film. Yeah. This from the offensive guys. You yeah. Know, like, you showing up on film. And the only thing I can do would be like, man, appreciate it, man. Mm -hmm. That's what I would tell. I say, appreciate it, man. But. No. I ain't hearing it from the white people. Right. You know what I'm right. saying? So that's that's the way I felt about it. And um, you know, just the pressure of not only the performance part about it, like I can't mess up at all. So now throughout the night, man, I'm waking up like fifteen times a night. Um mm -hmm. and I'll say this for training camp, like, it's brutal because you're getting up at Five as a rookie, five thirty in the morning, mm -hmm. six o'clock in the morning, and you may not be getting back to your room till like eleven o'clock that night. So that's training camp. You know what I'm saying? Four a.m. to eleven p.m. And I ain't going to sleep soon as I get to the room. That just right. ain't how I'm built. Right. You know I gotta yeah, unwind. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Drilling is still going. I gotta yeah. unwind, so I might not be going back to sleep till one o'clock. Yeah, maybe. Two. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> maybe two. Like. And then I'm waking up 15 times a night because because I'm like man and I can't be late up at five, I can't do four. this I can't be late and all of this stuff just hit me even once sleep yeah so I'm like man this I'm like man this ain't it right here Ooh. I'm like this ain't it but you know I was willing to stick through it mm -hmm. you know fight through the battles and uh, nonetheless um, got released from Houston and uh, Green Bay was the first team to call. Green Bay was the first team to call me. They wanted to bring me in for a workout. And, you know, I just started that process, you know, right away. Like I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really disappointed when I got uh, released by Houston. Right. Obviously, I wanted to, like I said, I wanted to make the team, yeah. but I didn't. Yeah. The reason why I really didn't want to make the team, because truthfully, I had, I had one of those coaches who I don't think I could have played for. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Like I had one of those guys, and I was already under so much stress. Exactly. At that point in time, and I was so, gonna do nothing and but. And then I got more. somebody else in my in my ear, like yeah. just cussing me out every day. Yeah. All of this right here, I'm like, man, look here, man, I ain't built that way, bro. Mm -hmm. I'm built to do a lot of things, but I ain't built to let another man another man talk to me. Right. Right. So we gonna get that straight right now. Mm -hmm. so I I go home to mama before I, I let you man yeah. talk to me like this. Nah, that thanks. just respect in my book. You know what I'm saying? So talk about your first NFL game experience and, and, and like what was going through your head from from the locker room to the tunnel right. to getting out there and seeing other people. So my first NFL game experience, um, it really was, and I'm talking about me making a team, being on the field in the regular season. Mm -hmm. This was my first NFL game experience. We was going against Philadelphia Eagles. Donovan McNabb, the quarterback. Mm. Um, they had Freddie Mitchell receivers, Kevin Curtis. And this specific year was my first year. I made the team outright. Typically, I tell you that most teams keep, keep five corners. This specific year, Green Bay kept six corners. Shut up. Specific year, Green Bay kept six corners. We kept six corners because I had a heck of a training camp. Mm -hmm. So it was like they had to. Ah, we can't, you know, we we can't get rid of this kid. Like, <laughs> he did too much. He did too much for preseason. So nonetheless, it was like we just gonna keep the best players. So they after that year, and I have to go back and look. But after that year. They always, they just like, we gonna keep six corners. Mm. So you set the tone. So set, set the tone. That's five cool. from five to six. So typically they kept five corners, five safeties. Mm. Okay. So now, you know, it's just best players. Whoever the best players, we gonna keep. 
Right. You know what I'm saying? We gonna keep. So that's the way Matter of fact, I think I have a a, a picture. You know, uh, <laughs> something here. Um, that's a football picture there. I have here. You said your first year, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was one of the first years for show. Sure. Yeah. These are my guys right here. Talk about this picture. This picture right here, we was at um, was at my coach house. We was at Speedy house. Um, this him right here, um, Lionel Washington. He's from Louisiana. Okay. Louisiana boy. Um, Louisiana stand up. Speedy played 15 years in the league. Um, I think he played for Oakland and Denver, and uh, was a heck of a coach, man. Uh, I enjoyed my time with him. Obviously, I got. I mean, I'm on here on this picture with, in my book, Hall of Famers. Hmm. Um, obviously, Wood going to the Hall of Fame this year. You know, you got Charles Wilson on here. Um, you got uh, Nick Collins. Um, in my book, is a Hall of Famer. This is my guy right here. His career was cut, cut short. I think he played seven years. Mm -hmm. But I mean, he was all pro, pro bowler, four years. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, of, of all all seven of those seasons, and you got Al Harris back here, man. Um, this the guys who I came behind, man. Like, like guys, like man, T. How how you crack the lineup with these dudes, man? I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I don't know. Like, I don't know. Like, I believe in myself. One of the beliefs I always had was. I feel like if you put me up against the next man, I will beat him up. Hmm. Like that was the belief I always had in myself. And we had to go a physical battle, or skill, you know, whatever it is, athleticism, whatever it is, I feel like I will beat out anybody you put me up against. Like that's what I did have. You know what I'm saying? I don't know how, how it was going to turn out. Mm -hmm. But I know if you told me you got to be out of this guy or you got to go against this guy, I'll figure it out. Cause I feel like I had the ability to do that. Right. You know, so I did that. Um, so you got those, those three guys right there who I just mentioned, man, is, is Hall of Famers in, in, in my book. And then you got some other really good players on on this um, on this picture also, players and coaches. And you got myself obviously down here, you know, who was a young pup in the game at that time and I had the opportunity to learn from um, Woodson and, and Al Harris and Nick Collins. You know, these guys were pro bowlers and um, I, I say to myself all the time and I say to those guys and I tell them, I'm like, man, I said, y'all did wonders for my career because um, I could have came in and, and had all the ability in the world, but without the, the wisdom and the knowledge mm -hmm. to go along with it to, you know, to, to flourish like you really right. should, those guys were there for me. Like they gave me that wisdom, they gave me that confidence. And then I put the pressure on myself. I was like, well, man, these dudes is pro bowlers and all pros. And like I was hanging out with them guys like Nick Collins and Will Blackman. Will mm -hmm. Blackman was my guy. He the one who, Will was the one who took care of me when I first got to Green Bay. Mm -hmm. like when we say, man, who was your first experience like which guy took you in? Right. Will was the guy who took me in. That's Will was the guy who took me in, um, and that's my guy. That's my guy right there. Um, but I was hanging out with those guys. Will, he was a heck of a uh, return man, um, special teamer, and he also was a really good corner. Mm -hmm. He just had, he just uh, had, he just got injured too often. Mm -hmm. But he was he was a heck of a player when he was on the field. Um, but I was saying, those guys right there, like I hung out with those guys. Like they were they was like my circle. Like, when we go into games, that's the crew who we gonna go out and we gonna eat. Mm -hmm. We gonna do the whole nine, you know, together. And they, like I said, these dudes was pro bowlers and, and all pros, man. And I was like, I can't really hang out with these. Like if I can't, I can't do what they doing. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Cause I was like, man, I'm hanging out with y'all and y'all. You know, at the end of the day, it was coming up, and they was, you know, at the end of the day, like they, 
they all pros. And I kind of felt a particular way. I was like, man, I was like, I feel like I'm doing my thing too, but what I gotta do to go to the next level? You know what I'm saying? What I gotta do to go to the next level? Because, you know, um, with my guys leaving me, I was like, man, y'all going to the Pro Bowl, man. I'm gonna be watching y'all. <laughs> you know I'm saying? I wanna be there with y'all here. Right. Just like we hanging out here with mm -hmm. the team, I wanna I do to those things team. too. So, nonetheless, like that kind of motivated me, man. That motivated me to like um, figure out what it was that I needed to do mm -hmm. to go to the next level and just kind of get the recognition that they did. Yeah. And I did get it, I did get it, but I also learned throughout that process that um, people gonna pub who they wanna pub. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? They're gonna pub who they wanna pub. Like this specific year that I made the Pro Bowl and, and All Pro, like it was, just a situation to where they just couldn't deny it. It was just a special year. And I still had some other years that I feel that I felt that I should have made it. Um, but this year here, like it was it was special to the point to they couldn't deny it. Like I should have been the first name come out of their mouth yeah. at that position when they when they said all oh, pro or oh, pro bowl corner. Yeah. Or oh, going to the pro bowl. I should have been the first name that came out of their mouth. And they had some great players. I mean, you still had your Darrell Revises, who Revis was like, I say all the time, I, I go back and I watch Revis film, man, and, and he was one of the most consistent, technical dudes who, um, probably who the game has seen. Like, um, you watch him, man, he was just, everything that he did was consistent. His technique, his patience, mm -hmm. everything that you look for at the cornerback position, like he, he had that. He was yeah. strong at the line and, um, and, and he shut down some of the best yeah. players at that position. And you know, that's that's the type of things that as a player who wanna get better, you have to go back and you gotta watch guys like that. There's no pride involved, man. Sure. I love watching skill. Right. You know what I'm saying? I right. love greatness. I love watching skill. So off season you go back and you watch guys like that. I watched the Revises, I watched the other guys who were considered the best corners at that time. You had, um, I think you had um, like Jonathan Joseph. Me and Jonathan Joseph came in the same year. It's a crazy part about it, that story. Me and Jonathan Joseph, I think it's the only two cornerbacks who were still in the NFL last year from the 06 draft. We was the only two left. Mm. We was the only two left, so, okay. you know, um, that was a good story, but I always went back and watched all of those guys, you know, who they considered to be the best, and um, see what I can learn, see what they did well, see where they were, you know, where they struggled at. Right. I want to see all of that stuff. Facts. You know what I'm saying? So um, I took what I could take and um, just added it to my game. It was cool though. That's dope. It's a good picture right here. Yeah. <laughs> I had to dig yeah. in this one. What's up? <laughs> That's yeah. a good picture right there, man. Okay, okay. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm starting you to run down all these interceptions and, you know, these memorable moments that you have, but mm -hmm. give me your top three favorite interceptions. So top three favorite interception is uh, I think pretty easy because it was it was the magnitude of the moment. Okay. When I got. Okay. And it was the year that we won a Super Bowl. Obviously, the ultimate thing to do is win a Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. But to make the plays, to really catapult your team to really win the big game, like I think that's the that's the. You talking about like one of these? I'm talking about like one of these right here. Oh like, man! Like yeah, like one of these right here. Game saving interception, end zone with 33 seconds left. Mm. 21 to 16. Now if that don't say that's the that's the difference in the game, I don't know what else will. I can remember this right here. They were they were inching close to scoring. Scoring range and um, we had to make a play. I feel like you you, you intercepted it like the just, way that you just hold like it. That. Uh, we had I feel to make like a play. It, it it stuck. We had to make a play and I can remember it, you know, um, 
Vic put it up in the air. Um, I was covering Riley Cooper. 